Hello everybody. I wanted to uh, spend a little time doing a video about the Applejack topic of the month, which was photos. Uh, unfortunately, with this quarantine that everybody's going through right now, uh, we can't get out and have a meeting together uh, where we all get to sit down and talk to each other. But we do have the opportunity to continue to learn, and one of those ways would be to to learn a little bit about what you would normally have seen at the Applejack meeting had we had it. So. Tonight, I'm going to uh, try to give you a few minutes on Apple's Photos app, which would have been the topic for one of our upcoming meetings. So most of you all use Photos. Photos is kind of one of the common apps that Mac users work with. Uh, they use it to edit photos that they already have or just to store a library of photos so that they can uh, uh, go back and refer to them at different times after they've, uh, they've taken them. Photos obviously runs from the little uh, flower star, multicolored star down here at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and start up the Photos app and you'll see there's my, my little grandson there. Uh, but I'm going to back up to the normal all photos view that you would see when Photos opens up. So I'll make this just a little bit bigger. Uh, photos is the Max application for being able to store your photographs. Uh, it's very similar to the Photos app that's on an iPad or an iPhone, uh, but it gives you quite a bit more capability to be able to do things if you're doing them from the Mac. Uh, photos gives you the ability to look at your photos in different views. Uh, the typical view is called All Photos. You can see that up here at the top. Uh, All Photos gives us photos by date, and here are the date ranges of the photos we're looking at right here. If I scroll with my mouse, down, you can see that that date range changes as I move into different dates of different photos. Now I have the ability to be able to cut that down even tighter by using some of the other uh, options up here at the top. I can look at days, and in this case it will show me by individual days that my photos have been taken, and it kind of puts them in a nice uh, viewable uh, view that shows you multiple sizes of different photos. I can also go to months in which it will now organize my photos by months. You can see uh, October 2017. You can see November 2017. You can see January 2018. So I can actually go to a particular month of photos and then if I want to see photos within that month I can double click on that month and it will drop into the day view to be able to show them in a little more uh, granular uh, consistency. So I'm going to go back to months. The The final one is years. Years gives you the ability to find photos by year and you can see I have four different years worth of photos in my photo library. If I for instance remember that that photo was probably taken in 2018 I can go to the 2018 view, double click here, it will take me into months. I can now walk down through the months of 2018 and try to hone in on the photo that I'm looking for. Well, maybe the photo that I'm looking for had to do with a swimming pool, so it's going to be in the warm months of the year, uh, probably June, July, August. And here, here are some photos of, of my uh, little grandson doing a little swimming there. So uh, the ability to be able to use these different views lets you be able to go in and find photos that you're looking for based upon the memories of the photo that you have. So that's kind of the general way that you would look at your photos inside the Photos app. But with photos you can do quite a bit more. You'll notice over here on the side that I have a sidebar menu. Now the sidebar menu should come on by default, uh, but it allows you to be able to go in and look at the different uh, types of organization that uh, Photos places in your photos. So for instance, Memories would be memories that got created from the Memories tab, uh, maybe on your phone. They would come across here as Memories, and I don't have any of those showing up here. Uh, people gives me the ability to be able to view my People album and see the different people that I have identified in here. And if I add new photos of any of these people, they will automatically scan them, see the face, and put them into this People album. Places gives me the ability to be able to see where photos have been taken. You can see if I zoom in on the map, it's starting to break them out into different locations. So here are some photos taken down around Springfield. These are some photos taken probably in Sedalia. Uh, here's Jefferson City, and then these are taken up in the St. Louis area. So uh, 
the closer I go down, the more granular that gets. It breaks them down and puts them into the location where the photo was actually taken. So if I zoom here into Jefferson City, you can see I have some, some photos taken up here near Holt Summit. I have some photos taken here probably at my house on the east end of town. And then I have some photos here taken on the, at the Capitol Mall, which are on the west end of town. And I can find those by just going down into this view. When I'm in this places view, I also have the ability to turn the satellite photo on, which will actually bring a satellite view in, allowing me to zoom in even closer. Uh, and you can see, let's just go back here. So here are some that are taken at the train station. It looks like the Amtrak station in Jefferson City, Missouri. These two photos right here. It shows me that there are two photos. If I click into these, double click into these photos, here uh, I can view those two photos. So those are the two photos that were taken when my uh, oldest grandson came down on the train. Now I also have the ability to be able to go into a grid view which lets me see the photos just directly in the grid. Uh, to be able to utilize the grid view though you have to select one of the photo groupings that you have. So for instance here is a group of photos uh, that were all taken at the Capitol Mall at some event that was out there. Uh, big trucks, I believe, or, and uh, my grandsons went out and looked at, at that stuff, or my oldest grandson did. So you have a lot of ability to be able to see things in the places view by just clicking on places over here. There's a view called recents. It'll show you your most recent photos. It will put them in uh, order as they come in. Uh, and you also have a view to show imports. And imports shows any recently imported photos that you've done. So how do we get photos into photos? Well, generally there are a couple of ways. The first way would be to utilize the Apple built-in systems to be able to move photos over from your phone, if you're using your phone to take photos, uh, from iCloud. To do that, you would have to be signed into iCloud and you would have to turn on either uh, photos in the cloud or you would have to turn on uh, the uh, uh, shared photo libraries uh, to be able to see photos across here. So, so uh, you do have the ability to have those automatically show up and go into your library by just using the iCloud syncing feature. But many people still take photos with other cameras and they download those photos or copy them from a card. So the easiest way to import photos into photos is to find the photos you want to import by inserting the card and maybe seeing them. Here's a folder I have over here uh, called Kansas City Science Center 2000. So here are some photos that were taken at the Science Center when my daughter was quite a bit younger uh, that I'd like to import into this photos library. So a couple of ways I could do that. I could go to the file menu. Uh, and I could import them from there. But the easiest way to import photos would be to just drag them over and drop them into photos. And you'll see that they come up and they automatically go in and import. Uh, it found a file called Collection 1 in that folder, which obviously is not a photo, so it didn't import it. Uh, but it did import the rest here. So, so it imported those photos from 2000 into my library. So. Here they are, imported on March 23rd, 2020 at 10.56 a.m., 22 new photos, and they all show up right here. So drag and drop those photos from your card, from your camera card, directly into iPhotos, into iPhoto, or photos, excuse me, and it gets you into the photo library. So now that you have photos in the photo library, maybe some of these ones that I just imported here, what can you do with them in photos? Well, the first thing you can do is you can double click them and make them big. So if I double click this photo, you can see here's a photo of my daughter when she was younger uh, riding a bike across a cable uh, at the uh, Kansas City Science Center. So I get to see this in a bigger view like this, but I also have some tools up here at the top of the screen. And you can see these tools across here. We're going to walk across and just show you what they do. The first tool, the little eye with a circle in it, is information. This tells me the date and time the photo was taken. It tells me it was taken on a Sony CyberShot camera. The resolution is 2048 by 1536. That was high resolution in the day in 2000. Uh, and it's a 1.3 megabit file. It also tells me the pertinent camera information down here below. It was an ISO 100 photo, 21 millimeter lens, had a zero EV setting, 
uh, it had the uh, uh, aperture 3.4 and it was 1 60th of a second. So I have the ability to be able to see all of that stuff from the photo. Can't change it at this point, but I can see it. I can also tell that this was a JPEG photo because of the name of the photo that's up here on top. So that gives me the ability just to see that information that's embedded in the photo when the photo is taken. The next tool over is the square with the arrow going up. It looks like this, and that's the share tool. It's just like on your iPhone or your iPad. It gives you the ability to share a photo in some particular way. Uh, in this case, I could create a shared album. I could send it by email. I could send it in a message, uh, airdrop it if the person is right here with me. Uh, I could put it into a note. Uh, set it as a reminder or even set it as my desktop picture if I'd like to do that. All of those things I can do with this photo as it is, as it looks uh, from the little square with the arrow going up, which is the share tool. The next one over is a little heart. The heart allows me to add it to my favorites. So if I click on the heart, you can see I now would add a new section over here called favorites. You see the favorites over here with a little heart and any of my favorite photos then end up in there so that I can kind of create a quick album of the best ones that I've got. The next tool is the rotation tool. This allows you to rotate the the photo uh, counterclockwise. Now many people say well I want to rotate clockwise. Well it just gives you the ability to do counterclockwise from here but obviously if you want to rotate it to the right 90 degrees, if you rotate it three times to the left, you'll end up in the same configuration that you've got. Uh, and I will rotate this one just back to the, to the normal view. The next tool is the Enhance tool. It's called Auto Enhance. It will automatically enhance this photo based upon the settings that I, Apple has provided to be able to make this look better. So if I click Auto Enhance, you can see that it brightened that photo, it sharpened it just a little bit, it made it easier for me to to use it uh, as something that I want to see. So uh, auto enhance is a real good trick to be able to quickly enhance a photo and to make it look better than it did when you took it. And the next tool is called edit. If I click on edit it is going to bring me into the adjust menu. The adjust menu has lots of different tools in here. We're going to walk through some of these adjustments uh, to start with. For instance, uh, the first tool is called Light. This allows me to change the lighting of the photo. You can see that there is a little white bar in the adjustment right over here in Light. That shows me that's where the light is set. If I click on that white bar, I can give it more light or I can give it less light. Uh, or I can just bring it back to where it was before uh, and, and set it the way I, I would like it. The next tool down is Color. It works very similar. You cl click on the bar. You can move the bar to remove color. If you want black and white, you can go all the way, or you can move the bar to add color. And you can add a lot of color if you'd like, but typically you don't want to do that. You want to leave it set to auto or maybe slightly uh, more than what it typically does. Uh, black and white allows me to make this photo black and white, make it darker or make it, br or darker or make it lighter, either one. Uh, I'm going to leave that set to auto and set the color back to uh, auto, so I'm going to take off the black and white by hitting the little X there. Anytime you've made an enhancement, you see it puts a little circle with a check mark. You can turn off that enhancement by clicking on that check mark. Once you've gotten down to the bottom of there, and each one of these also have options that you can do, like saturation, color cast. If you want to actually get right into the nitty gritty of being able to adjust this, like adjust the black point for black point compensation, or or uh, do a uh, contrast adjustment directly. You can now click into any of these and adjust the contrast or or whatever you'd like just by changing those. If I click options on the black and white you see it gives me the tonals, the neutralities, and the grain that I can add to the photo. Each one of these tools have a little diamond out in front of it right here that I can click on the diamond and close that tool once I'm happy with the way it's been adjusted. So the next one is called Retouch. If I click on Retouch, you can see that it has something called Size and then a little paintbrush looking thing. Well, this is the retouching tool and Size has to do with the size of the retouching brush. So if I click on the retouching brush, if you notice over here on the photo, uh, I'm over here in this column right here by the side. Uh, if you notice here on the photo, I have a big round circle that is my retouching brush. Now let's say, for instance, I want to take out these blemishes that are in this concrete column right here. That 
that brush is a little bit too big so I can come over here and adjust my brush size down smaller so that I can do my retouching brush in a much smaller uh, touch right there. So let's say I want to take these two blemishes that are right there out. Well I can kind of draw over that and you can see that it will automatically remove what you're trying to remove and add back pixels that are similar to the edge of what you've removed. So here's another one down here, a little hard to see probably. I can take that one out and it will do that also, make it look, make it look nice. So I can make that much more, uh, much more uniform by using that particular tool. The retouching tool is very handy. It's a very easy tool to use uh, and it's built into iPhoto. So we're gonna do that. If I have any red eye in my photo, I can select a brush for red eye and take the red eye out. Uh, this particular photo doesn't have any. Uh, I can adjust the white balance. Now white balance is a little difficult to understand, but basically what white balance is trying to do is it's trying to allow you to pick a point on the photo that you believe is a particular color of white. And it will adjust every other color based upon that particular color of white that you click on being correct. So for instance, up here I have a tool, an eyedropper tool that I'm going to be able to click on something with. And I also have a drop down. So I can say adjust by skin tone, adjust by temperature tint, or adjust by just finding neutral gray. Well in this case, since I have a person in the photo, I'm going to adjust by skin tone. I'm now going to click on the eyedropper and I'm going to go find some skin tone. You see the cursor turns into a little eyedropper and there is some skin tone right here. I'm going to select that and you can see it changes the warmth of the photo all based upon the fact that it knows what I just clicked on is skin tone. It's kind of handy to be able to adjust a photo that has a picture of person with skin tone in it. The next one is called curves. Curves gives you the ability to be able to adjust by curves if you're comfortable with doing that. Uh, adjusting by curves allows you to move the color wheel or the color uh, tones of a particular photo based upon a uniform linear curve. It also gives us the ability to be able to crop color ranges that are maybe causing the photo to look out of out of normal. So I can come down here to the bottom, click on the little dot and move this over and it kind of crops out these ranges here that are really out of the photo so that I don't want to see. This happens, this is a real handy tool when you're trying to adjust a photo that has something really bright and something dark in it. You can clip those ranges and make it look much more uniform. Next is called levels. And, and keep in mind, all of these levels have the ability to be able to, or, or these, these tools have the ability to be able to do the same thing. They're just doing it different ways. So let's say, for instance, you notice that over here I have this really bright area in the photo. If I want to take that out, I can kind of move that curve over and adjust the level of those things to, to kind of adjust the levels of the photo. I can also move the center level of the photo to change the color of the center. Uh, and it may be a little difficult to see on the video that we're doing today. Definition is the next one. This basically just allows you to sharpen a little bit. Uh, you can add a little more sharpened definition to the photo by just clicking over here in the tool and giving it a little additional. We're just going to hit auto and let it do its own selection. Selective color allows you to adjust any particular color. Really nice for taking out a color cast that might be in a photo. So you take a photo, there's kind of a green color cast in it. You can tone down the greens by clicking on the green and then adjusting the hue, the saturation, and the luminance of that particular color. And all it does is tone down the green colors, leaving the rest at their normal levels. Noise reduction will also sharpen for you. Makes the photo look a little sharper. Sometimes makes the photo look a little grainier though, so you want to be a little careful with how much noise reduction you give it. And finally, sharpening gives you the ability to be able to sharpen the photo Two, and typically I sharpen it at about 0.1 uh, and particularly if I'm going to print the photo I want to sharpen it at about 0.1 so that it takes advantage of the high dot pattern that's in most photo printers today. And finally the last thing you can do is add a vignette. Now a vignette is kind of a, a dark area around the outside so if I want to add a vignette to this I can say you know do that and see how it kind of darkens the outside edges of the photo. Uh, that's a nice photographic uh, tool to highlight something that's in the center of the photo. 
So those are all the built-in tools that are in photos. There's a lot of them and they're a little hard to get used to. My suggestion is to pick a photo and play with it. As long as you don't hit done, you're not going to change anything in the photo. In fact, anything that I've changed up here, if I set reset adjustments down here, it's going to take that photo back to the normal view, the view that it came into the editing tool with. Uh, and that's that's a good thing to do when you're playing with being able to look at all these uh, these adjustment tools. So those are the built-in adjustments that are in photos. Now in addition while you're in the editing view you get some new tools up here at the top. One is called filters and filters allows you to pick a color style. Uh, this might be the easiest way to be able to take a photo into a mono, monotone photo if you want to by just applying a monotone style to it. You can always click back to original. But there are some other color styles also, some vivid cool colors. Uh, there's vivid which kind of pumps the color up a little bit. Uh, probably vivid looks better here than original. We'll leave it in vivid, that's fine. The other tool up here at the top is the cropping tool. And the cropping tool allows us to do just that, to crop and to adjust the rotation of a particular photo. So I think for this particular photo, there's, there's way too much excess in here. I want to kind of get the only the bike down and I also may want to adjust the angle a little bit. Now the angle is shown here in this little vernier that shows up on the side. If I click on the little diamond though, uh, you, the diamond stays but the vernier moves so I can adjust the angle of the photo. So if I wanted this photo to be true to the platform that's there, I can use the little graph lines that are on the, the screen uh, to line up with a horizontal line on the photo and that gives me a nice even uh, level photo. In this particular case I think the angle that I took it at, uh, the zero angle, is probably just as good so I'm going to leave that there. You also have the ability to auto adjust the angle where it kind of picks the the normal resolution or the normal angle that it thinks the photo should be. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Once you've done all your adjustments here you have a couple of things that you can do. You could revert to original if you want to go back and not use what you did, or you can just hit done. If you hit done, it then saves that photo into your photo library as the, all the changes have been made uh, and your photo looks much nicer than it did originally, so that's kind of handy. Now I will note that if you've been into edit and made a change, if I go back into edit here, I still have the ability to revert back to that original photo and hit done and it takes me back to the original. So even though I made those changes, and I may have made those changes months ago, I can still take that photo back to the way it looked when I, when I started. So also again, another tool that's in the top bar here is the uh, zoom tool over here on the, on the side. If you can see I'm looking at it at about 127%, I can zoom in to, a, to as far in as 400% if I'd like, or all the way out to make it fit to the screen or the open view screen that I've got here. So that gives you the ability to be able to make it bigger and smaller. Now the zoom is kind of handy and it shows up even while you're in the editing here. So let's say for instance I was going to do some retouching and remember I took out these little little dots in the concrete that are over here. Well let's zoom in as far as we can go and then use the hand to be able to come over and see those little dots in the concrete. Well now if I go in and I check my brush I can get rid of those much easier because I'm in a little tighter I can see them real clearly and take them all out. So as you can see just by clicking I am able to reduce or remove those dots that are kind of there that don't look so nice. Here's another one over here there's a few more over here on the side maybe that one and it removes them very well so that's kind of handy. And I can change back my zoom ratio right there. Now whenever I'm looking at a photo in a large size like this, I can always come up to the top by the three dots and hit the arrow to go back to the group of photos that I was looking at right there. So let's go into another photo. Let's open this one up and you can see this has got kind of an orange color cast to it. So we're going to go into edit and we are going to go in and try to take the color cast out. Now the first thing I'm going to try is to hit the auto enhance tool. And it did a pretty good job. It brightened it up pretty well. Uh, as you can see, this is not the uh, the highest uh, resolution of this. It is kind of uh, the fo of this photo. In fact, there's a little bit of movement in it. You can see that there's some duplications and doubling there in some of the areas. Not a lot you can do about that particular thing. 
but I have the ability to be able to come in and still make changes to it to make it a better looking photo. So I'm going to go into levels and you can see from the levels here I have lots of color. I have the red, the green, the blue, all of that in here. But over here at the end all I do is have some real high points. Well this is a good opportunity to be able to grab the little corner and bring the level over like that to brighten up the photo. Brightens it up pretty nicely. So I'm going to hit done and say I like that better so we'll, we'll keep moving. Other things that you can do while you're in photos, there are tools at the top, there are menu bar across here like there normally would be. In the photos menu is basically just where you would quit. In the file menu you can create a album or a smart album. The easiest way to create an album is to select a bunch of photos by like clicking on one, if you hold the shift key and then clicking on the last one. You can see it highlighted all of this group of photos that were imported here. Now I'm going to create a new album with those 22 photos. And you see it creates it over on my left. It calls it imports. I'm going to title it Kansas City Science Center. And leave that as my name. Now a lot of people say, well I gave it a nice long name, I can't see it all. Over here in the sidebar I have the ability to move my cursor over to the line between the sidebar and the main photos and I can make my sidebar wider if I want to to be able to see more of my text. Of course it does make my photo area smaller but, but if you got a big screen it really doesn't hurt you much at all. So I've got this nice uh, group of photos now here. Uh, I could show them as a slideshow, I could show them as a memory. Uh, I'm going to click show as a memory and let it create a memory for these photos. And it does, it calls the Kansas City Science Center, it gives me the dates uh, that uh, of all these photos that were here uh, and creates a nice new memory for me. Uh, if I go back to my photos list and then go look at memories, you see that memory did not add it here because I was just looking at this individual uh, group from an album as a memory. I didn't really add it as a memory, I just made it look as a memory. If I scroll down to the bottom I can say add to memories and it automatically now will put it up in the memories list up here. So here's my photos, there's my memories, and there's my one memory that I've created right there. So that's how you get memories here that don't automatically get created and transferred from your phone. So also in the file menu there is create a new smart album. And we're going to do that. I'll show you how a smart album works. A smart album uses that some of that information about the photo to be able to select a bunch of photos all at once. There are a lot of different pieces of information you can use from the photo. If I click here on the photo I can change all of this here uh, to aperture, camera model, flash, whatever I want to. Uh, Typically though, in many times when I'm creating a smart album, it's going to be more as date captured. So if I want the date captured to be in the range of let's say 101-2000 to 12-31-2000 and I'm going to give this the name 2000. So these are all the photos that were taken in the year 2000. You see that it found 21 photos. It shows it right here. I can say OK and it creates me a new smart album of photos from the year 2000. Now the difference between a standard album and a, and a smart album is the standard album I have to choose the photos and put them in there. For instance if I would import another group of photos from the year 2000 they would not show up in my Kansas City Science Center group because that was just a normal album I created. I can always drag them over and put them in that album but I have to do that by myself. It doesn't automatically happen. Now if I import a bunch of new photos from the year 2000 they will automatically add in to the 2000 album. Now one nice way I like to organize my albums is I create an album for every year. So if I look back at my photos here, I can see there were some photos taken in 2018. So let's just do this. Let's create another new smart album. Let's call this 2018. Let's uh, say the date captured is in the range of 1 
O1 of uh, 2018. Sorry about that, my phone rang. And you'll see that it found 91 images. I'm going to say OK, and it creates that album over here. So now I have an album for 2000 and an album for 2019. I typically create one for every year so that I have my photos segregated by year that are easy to access over here. Now another trick that you can do over here from the file menu is you can say new folder. If I create a new folder I can call my folder years and you'll see that it creates a folder with a little dropout icon right there. If I grab my 2018 and drop it into years, grab my 2000 and drop it into years. I now have all my years in a folder over here on the side that I can easily get access to. I can open and close them when I want. This Kansas City Science Center, I'm going to drop it down into the folder I have called trips. So now I have a Kansas City trip or a St. Louis trip, a Montana trip, there's nothing in it, uh, and a Kansas City Science Center trip. That way I have the ability to be able to close all these so I can see more things along my side list than, uh, than I have uh, in the sidebar. So it's kind of handy. If I click on the upper level of the folder, you can see it shows each one of these folders individually. And if I scrub over it, I see the photos that are in that particular folder. Kind of handy. I also have the ability to adjust the order of these. If I want them to be 2000 and then 2018, I just click on one, drag it over behind the other one and drop it and it will stay there just like that. So that folder created from the the uh, file menu. Now those smart albums I created I have the ability to edit them by using the edit smart album folder by doing it right there. Next down is the import. Import allowed me to import photos if I want to but as I told you just dragging them over and dropping them is sometimes better than doing an import. It's easier at least. I have the ability to export photos. Now exporting photos is pretty simple, but you have to select the photos you want to export. So let's say I want to export these 2018 photos here. I can click on the first one, and then I can use my command key on the keyboard and click on this one, and I click on this one, and I click on this one. I can select just the ones I want to export. So I selected those particular photos. I'm now going to go up to File and do an export. It says Export 5 Photos. When I'm doing the export, I have two options. I can export the photos, which would be as they are now. That includes any changes or adjustments you've made to those photos. Or I can export the unmodified originals. I typically want to export the ones that I fixed. So if I say export, it asks me, what do you want to, what kind of settings do you want for this? Well, typically I want to put those in JPEG when I'm exporting. If they were raw images originally, it gives me the ability to leave them in raw. Uh, I can include title, keywords, and description. That's all of that data that's in the back of the photos that you don't really know is there. I can export location information if it's there also. Uh, I can use the file name, or I could say call it a sequential file name or an album name, whatever I want. I'm going to use the original file name. Uh, and I can say, what do I want the subfolder format to be? Do I want there to be none or by the name of the moment? And I'm going to say none. So if I hit export, it will come up and ask me, where do you want to export these to? So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call these export and put it on my desktop over here uh, and select that export folder and say export. And you'll notice it will export the folders and it will tell me in the upper right corner of the screen that it exported five folders or five uh, images. And here they are right here. If I click on one and hit the space bar, I can look at that photo pretty easily. So that's how you get photos out that you've put in. So next up in the file menu is share. This gives me the ability to create a shared library or to share individual photos with people. And again, I can share them by that little same share menu that I showed over here, right there but I can do it from up here also. I can do create, which allows me to create a book. And to create a book, I have to download a book tool uh, from one of the book services like Shutterfly or MPix uh, and allow me to create a book uh, out of my photos. Uh, I can create a calendar, I can create a card. Uh, and many of these, when you go to any of these creates and it says 
App Store, that means you need to go get an App Store plugin for a particular service that can print that for you. Uh, I can play these photos as a slideshow right here. Uh, I can do Consolidate. Consolidate uh, will allow me to bring in any photos that maybe were not stored in the library at the time of import. Typically today, most of our photos all get stored in the library. But if you have an old iPhoto library that you've migrated over, some of those photos may be in a different location. This sucks them all into the library and puts them all in one place. Uh, I can close, obviously, or I can print a photo. Now, printing is a little interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select a photo here, and I'm going to go print, go to print. Now, print brings up a tool. It gives us the ability to choose our printer up here. It gives us the ability to say what size paper I'm going to use, and you can use uh, large paper, you can use 4 by 6 so in any of the standard photo sizes, you just got to select them. Uh, and it says, how do I want to print it? Well, I typically want to print it color, fine, or I want to use one of the paper types, like the uh, photo on plain paper, fine, or photo on glossy paper, fine, if I do that. And then I also have the ability to then select any of these presets. Now, fit fits it to the, or, uh, fill, or excuse me, fit fits it to the screen. Fill will actually fill the photo into the paper, which will sometimes make part of the photo go off the paper. Uh, I have the ability to do custom, where I can choose whatever size I want. Uh, let's say I want a 6.5 by 8.7 photo. I can do that. And if it needs to turn the photo to make that fit, it automatically does that. I can then hit print down here at the bottom. Uh, or if you have a large group of photos and you want a contact sheet, it will print very small images of each photo onto one piece of paper, which is kind of handy. So that's printing out of uh, photos. In the edit menu, we have the standard cut, copy, paste stuff. We have the ability to, say, to use a font if we're going to type in a font onto uh, a photo. Uh, you can do spelling and grammar check, all of the standard stuff that we'd see in the edit menu. Under image, I can go to location here and if it's a photo so if I select that photo and go to image I can adjust the date and time this is really handy if I've scanned in photos if I've scanned in photos from years ago maybe a fourth birthday party for your child you pretty well know what that date is so you can then select those photos you can come into the image tool there and say adjust date and time and you can put the real date and time of when that photo happened rather than the date that you scanned it in which would be the normal default. You can set the time zone if you want. You can also put the time in if you want. Hit adjust and it will adjust that photo to that time. That's pretty handy to make your photos all work nicely in your photos library so that it'll show them by years in the correct order. That's image adjust date and time. Uh, I can do things like rotation. Remember how we talked about I have to rotate uh, counterclockwise from the tool here. Over here in the menu, I can do rotate clockwise, counterclockwise. I can flip it horizontal, flip it vertical. Uh, I can automatically enhance it without having to go into the edit tools. All of that from over here in the image tool menu. I can open the viewer, which just basically brings it up into a big screen like it would if I double clicked on it, like that. I can show the edit tools, which basically just hits edit for that particular photo. Same as hitting the little edit button once I'm into the photo. Uh, a lot of these tools over here are kind of superfluous. You can do them other ways. Uh, I can add the photo to a particular album. I can add it to the last album I used. Uh, I can do an edit with, and I'm going to show you some of this edit with tools here at the very end. Uh, I can duplicate that photo. Let's say I want to do a crop on it. If I want to duplicate that particular photo, now I have two of them here, you see. So I can go into this one. I could hit edit. I could hit crop. And I could crop this just down to my little grandson's head. Like that. Hit done. And in my library, I'm going to have the full size image and just the head. Because I duplicated the photo, I can use uh, my tools on one of those without changing the other. That's under image and it's duplicate. Uh, you can also delete a photo from here, but you can delete a photo by hitting the delete key too. So that's another way to do it. In the view menu, I can change my view to the library view. Any of those views that are on the side menu. I can go to an album directly. I can go to a project directly if I want to. 
I can go to metadata and show the metadata for a particular photo. I can show the metadata for titles, and that shows me the titles of every photo underneath them. Somewhat handy sometimes, and particularly if you've named photos. Um, if you haven't named photos, you're going to get the camera name of the photo, and that may not be uh, nearly as helpful. So uh, it's kind of whatever you're used to, whatever you like to work with. So I'm going to turn off those titles. Uh, I can show face names by doing that. It will then show me the name of the face of the person in the photo if I want to. Uh, I can say hide face names also. Show hidden photo albums. You have the ability to create a photo album and then hide it if you'd like to. I don't know exactly why you would do that, but you could. You can sort the photos by uh, title, by the oldest photo, the newest photos. And remember, all of these tools for sorting and showing all work within an album. So you just adjusting the view of a particular album. Uh, and you have the ability to always show the toolbar, which is typically uh, a good thing to always show the toolbar. So, um, Or you can enter into full screen if you want. In the window, you have the ability to be able to do info. And that brings up that info block that we looked at before. Uh, doing info from the window screen is the same as hitting the little eye with a circle in it right there. Okay, we also have the ability to do keywords. If you want to put keywords on photos so that you can search for that, keywords are kind of an old style method of organizing photos. Now that photo, the Photos app does so much organization of its own, doing keyword management is kind of odd. People don't usually do that much anymore. But it's still available to be able to do it. And then there's the help menu where you can go get help about photos. So that kind of walks you through the Photos app, shows you a little bit about how to do things. The only thing I haven't shown you is that the Photos app is extendable. You know, Photos does everything that I've shown you up to now, but you can add extensions to Photos. Some of these are add-on programs or applications you purchase uh, that allows you to do more with the photos that are in your photo album. So for instance, I'm going to pick a photo. Let's, uh, let's pick, uh, how about this one of my daughter? So here's my daughter on a snowy day standing outside with her hood up. I'm going to go into the edit and it brings me up my edit tools. Well maybe I want to have more tools or better tools to be able to edit with. Photos has the ability to be able to have extensions that are installed so that you can automatically go use another program to do a lot of this editing work. For instance, if you look here on the extensions menu, this is the little uh, the one that shows the extension menu. It's a circle with three dots in it. I have a number of photos that are put in, or a number of applications, that actually extend the use of photos. Uh, some of these are very good, some of them are, are okay, not so great, but, but, uh, but some of them really do a nice job on photos. Uh, a couple of them that I use a lot, uh, I use Noiseless CK, which lets me take noise out of a photo. You know, sometimes you take a photo, maybe you're zoomed a little too close, and it looks really blocky. Well, that's noise, and you can use a tool like Noiseless CK to be able to take that noise out of a photo. Works pretty well. If I select it for this particular photo, it goes out and runs that program. We'll launch the demo mode here. And it gives me the ability to be able to take some noise out of the photo. So you can see the before and after. You can see that there's a difference. You can particularly see it in the eyeglasses. That it does a pretty good job. This is not a particularly noisy photo anyway, but but it allows you to be able to do that. Uh, and I can't save it because I am in the, the demo mode. So another tool that I use is called uh, Photomailer. Photomailer. Uh, 3.0. It's a automatic photo fixer. It does all the changes for me. Uh, supposedly it use, uses AI, uh, artificial intelligence, to be able to look at a photo and fix it up to the optimal view. So it goes through and it does this magic that it talks about. It takes a little bit of time, analyzes the photo, uh, and when that photo gets analyzed it brings it up and shows you the, the changes that it's made to the photo. So here we are. You can see that the before looks like that and the after is much more vivid and bright. It is sharper. Look at those trees. Look at how, how uh, foggy those trees look in the before. And they look much brighter, much sharper there. Uh, so I could hit Save Changes, and it would do that for me. 
Now, again, this is in a demo mode because I'm in a different user, so it's not going to want to save these to my library. But the beauty of photos is there are lots of extensions you can use. Uh, if you want a more able editor, you might choose Luminar 4. It's a very good editor available in the App Store. Uh, does a very nice job of giving you a lot more ability to be able to make changes to photos than uh, the Photos app does by its own self. Uh, there are other tools to do other different different things than what I have installed here. A few of these are, are kind of nice. Uh, if I was going to recommend the one, it would be the Photo Le Meilleur 3 uh, that actually works pretty well. It is not an App Store app. It's one that you download uh, and purchase from a different company but it automatically installs and adds into the Photos app. So that's kind of a rundown of Photos. It kind of gives you an idea of all the different tools and ability you have within here, uh, how you can edit your photos, make changes to them, set them into albums, print them. You can do pretty much anything you want to with a photo in the Photos application. I'm going to hit Done here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Quit because there's one last thing I want to show you. If I go into my Macintosh hard disk here, or click down here on my Finder icon, and go into my user folder and choose my user, and the user I'm running under right now is called Service. I then go down to the Pictures folder, and you'll see in the Pictures folder I have one file. I have a file called Photos Library. All of the photos that you've imported into Photos all go into that single file, that Photos Library file. That ability gives you the ability to be able to back up that your entire photo library very easily and ensure that you have all of your photos in that single backup. If I wanted to do a backup of my entire photo library right now, all I would have to do is go to my user pictures folder, select my photo library, drag it over to one of my other disks and it would back up my entire library without having to worry about it. You don't have to go look for any particular folders. You don't have to pick up any specific folders and back them up. You don't have to worry about metadata. Everything is in that Photos library. So that makes Photos a very nice application for Mac users to be able to go in and do some editing with. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this makes you feel like you've learned a little something for, about the Mac, even though we can't have an Applejack meeting this month. Uh, if you have questions on Photos, you all pretty much know how to get a hold of me. Uh, feel free to email me, text me, or call me. I'll be happy to work with you and talk to you about any of the, the uh, tools that are within Photos or how to be able to do things. Thanks a lot.